Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch Hip Cats and Groovy Chicks. You know, I had a request from a subscriber recently asking me to give examples of how the Barry Harris six diminished scale and chords could be used in songs. In other words, the practical application, and I'm, I, I'm into that sort of thing. I did a video previously on the scale, and you should study that first, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it in a couple of tunes, specifically, but not for me, and then maybe a, a couple others after that. But I have a quote for you first, and it comes from a chef, Charlie Trotter, well-known chef. He said this, a jazz musician can improvise based on his knowledge of music. He understands how things go together. And for a chef, once you have that basis, that's when cuisine is truly exciting. So that's a really important point, a good quote. Because I'm going to put some things together now that are hopefully are going to show you how I would use that Barry Harris scale in a couple of songs. Here we go. I had a request to show how the Barry Harris diminished six scale concept of chords could be applied to a song. And the song I picked out is But Not For Me by George Gershwin. And it has a lot to do with um, major six chords and then diminished approaches to each inversion of the major six. So if I have a, a C major six, I'm going to use the key of C. It's easiest to understand. So I can. Those are the four inversions. Root in, uh, four positions. Root position, first inversion. Second inversion, third inversion. Like that. Now, if we put the diminished chords in between. It's going to go on this scale. They're going to be built on this scale. And that's the, the scale that he's using with the flat six in there. That creates the diminished chord when we go to the next chord. So we go up one, we go diminished. That approaches the first inversion, then we do diminished, approaching the second inversion, diminished, approaching the third inversion, then diminished, approaching the root again. So like, really what's going on, if you put a bass note in it, it would be like C6, then this would be G7 flat 9, all right, and this would be 
C6 inverted, and this would be G7 flat 9 again inverted. And this would be C6, and this would be G7 flat 9 inverted. Now the next one would be the relative minor. So that's the third inversion of, of uh, C6, which is A minor 7. It's the relative minor of, of C. And then the last one would be a different inversion of the G7 flat 9. So that's what we're going to be talking about, is that particular scale and how it's used here. So the first time I used it, um, well, we're going to start out with just the simple chords, then show you how I built diminished chords from the simple chord arrangement and how they are how they function so now the basic chord arrangement might be something you'd see in a fake book and, or you know on the score of the original score but it's just I'm using the traditional chord changes uh, some people use a two chord then it go to five one but I'm using the one six two five so it's six then it goes to the four three six dominant then two in dominant form five now there's this ascending line now the original chord there in the simple arrangement would be just an F but what is that G sharp doing against the uh, F that well the original score showed it as a, as a C augmented but it doesn't fit the chord of, a, of an F chord F6 chord but it resolves pretty quickly to the third of it. So we can use that F chord there. Then we go down to the two chord. Now we have this three chord with that melody note. So, see that doesn't fit the chord. Then we have another one. Now that really doesn't fit the chord. This is the chord there. This is a ninth to the five chord. So, the original version or fake book version of this didn't take into consideration how to harmonize those notes that didn't fit the chord and so those are the notes that are going to apply to diminished chords and relate to the Barry Harris concept of the diminished sixth scale and the chords that are involved. Now, a general rule of using diminished chords might be if you're playing a melody and there's a note that doesn't fit the chord, you might try playing a diminished chord. And it's easy because if you have that note and you, I, I say play a diminished chord, then you just take that note and you create minor thirds. See, so that note can be fit an F diminished or an A flat diminished or a B diminished or a D diminished. You see, it doesn't matter where you put the root will give you the definition. So like if it's this note, you know, now I can just create minor thirds. You know, minor third, minor third, minor third. So that can be a C diminished or an E flat diminished or a G flat diminished or an A diminished. So there's a lot of ambiguity there with diminished chords. So the first one we see here is on the C, next note doesn't fit that passing tone doesn't fit this the C so we can put a diminished chord there which one doesn't matter you just make a diminished chord built on the D so I can call it a B diminished that's a, creates a nice bass line right and that's exactly what Ahmed Jamal plays in his famous recording of but not for me he plays that the 
Let's see, the next one would be, I'll use a tritone substitute there of A flat to the G. Now here's the, here's the most important one, that coming up. Now this is the note against an F, so there, find a diminished chord. All right, so ends up being an F diminished, right? Because it can't be, you know, that's really what it is, it's an F diminished. Going to an F, resolving there, right? Then the next one, now this one here, this one here is relating to an E minor chord because it's going to resolve to an E minor. So it's in the E minor system, which is the same as the G system. So it's this system, G6, right? To that one, A diminished, right? To C, C diminished. Then here's your G6, inverted. There's your, call it a D7, flat nine. Here's your relative minor. You see, so it's not just about the C system here. It has a lot to do with what a chord you're approaching in that C system. We're approaching an E minor. Now we're thinking of the approach, the diminished chord approach to an E minor. You see? So this is, this is very tricky that way. Let me continue. So now this is perhaps the most complex of the techniques because I'm taking a four note chord and I'm translating it to the right hand with the melody on top. So first chord D minor there, I'm going to put it there and then on the G7 flat 9, I'm going to put it there. That's hard for me because I have a bent finger here but I can do it like this. I have this. So there, there you see is the C6. Here's the diminished chord. This is going through the system of the diminished six chord system. You see it's working perfectly there on this melody. Da 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 because it's right in the C scale. So there's your and then I can put the bass notes like this. C, B, A minor. And then here. A7 there with the flat 9. D9 here. There's the A flat chord approaching the G, which is the tritone substitute. There's the G7 flat 9 with the 13 in. Now here we go. Now there you have a, the approach, the diminished approach to the F chord, but it, we're not going to hit the F chord. We're going to go the, the F diminished here. Like that. Right? There's the approach to the D minor. 
and another approach to the E minor. Diminish the chord to the A minor, and then here we go with this. Approach to the C chord, and the C sharp diminished the chord approach to the D minor, which is the F system, right? There's your tritone substitute again. So you can see that this particular technique of the right hand having the, the voicing in four notes is the most difficult or more complex of all the techniques. And now the extension of that would be to translate it into a drop two position, which would be three notes in the right hand and one note in the left, harmonizing with the with the right hand. Another example of the sixth diminished scale, the Barry Harris scale, um, in a tune would be Fly Me to the Moon. Now, this is in the key of C, or relative to A minor. And you, ha you have this. Now, right there, you have it, you know, you, there it is. There's your second inversion going to the diminished chord here and passing down to here. So that's A minor. That could be thought of as A flat diminished, and then C6 there. Now the next one, since it's approaching a D minor, it's not going to be, you know, it's got to be this diminished chord there, but what is that? Going down to there. Well, that's now moving to the F system, because we're moving to D minor. So it's this system, you see, so you have to change the the system, this is the C system or the A minor system going now to the F system or the D minor system. Still in the D minor system now. Now moving it, that's interesting, moving it now to the G system. Moving to G. Back to D minor. Now there it is. The, the F system or the D minor system, like that. So that's that's pretty interesting. It's moving back and forth from the C system to the F system, or what you could call the relative minor of A minor to D minor. Another example of the sixth diminished scale application to a tune would be the the way you look tonight. It's in E flat, so it's three flats. So so now. Uh, the system would be like this, E flat 6, F diminished, E flat 6, you know, you go like this. There's your relative minor, C minor, 7. There's your E flat, so here, here's the, so I'm doing this. I do it as a drop too, it sounds like this. beautiful actually right there so there's your there's your you can look at it as your B flat diminished F minor 7 so it's relating to the F minor now approaching the F minor so it's like a C7 
then here, here we go, continuing. Same thing again. See, so there's another example. You see it working within the key of E flat and approaching that F minor chord. Yeah, so I tried to cover a lot in this video. I showed you three songs, and there's so much to this that I can't cover it in one video. It'd be too long and boring. But I hope you get some, even some small tips out of this, this whole thing and start to practice it. But the scores are on my website, so you can download them and study them that way. Write to me if you have questions. You know, if you write to my email address, I always answer lots of questions that people write to me about. So uh, until next time, we'll have a sign off. I'm going to take a minute to give you a look into my book. Here's the cover, and it's in a three ring binder, which makes it very practical. All the pages lie flat on the music stand, and you can take pages out to photocopy them. In most books, you can't do that, so it's very practical that way. It's tape here, but anyway, chapter 20 in, vo in book 2 is on rootless voicing. So you have the 251's root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. I was using the first inversion and the third inversion. So I call the first inversion the A form, like John Mahegan, and also the second version is there, but then the third inversion is the B form. So they're all written out for you. The 251's, you have them all here. And there's a lot in this book that's very practical, as well as there's songs to play, exercises, and so on. Things that are going to really help you as a resource to develop your skills in jazz piano. Here's Herbie the cat. He's the grooviest cat. He's the cool cat. And we're signing off from the jazz ranch. You know, it was his great uncle that was on the uh, New York Giants football field recently running down the field. It was a big story. It was pretty funny, right? Right, Herbie? That was your uncle. <laughs> you know, until next time, I'll say signing off from the Jazz Ranch in the words of my great friend Hermie Dressel up there. And he's saying, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Right, Herbie? Say goodbye. Bye-bye.